On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you inside Lisa Henderson's elegant and timeless Dallas home. A labor of love, Lisa's home underwent serious renovations in order to bring her fresh take on traditional design to life. Gorgeous enveloping wallpapers, French fabrics, and a fusion of antiques and modern touches create a sophisticated yet approachable ambiance in each room. Enjoy! A big thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. Hi everyone, I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're thrilled to be partnering with Babbel. So I actually studied French all throughout school, but my skills are a little bit rusty, and I've been wanting to improve them so that I can speak to my two-year-old son with some words and phrases. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and what's great about it is that you learn real-world conversations. So the app is very simple to use, and right now we're going to start to learn some new words. Excusez-moi, monsieur. Excusez-moi, monsieur. That means, excuse me, sir. C'est entre le musée et la cathédrale. It's between the museum and the cathedral. Got it right? So if you want to start speaking a new language in just three weeks, be sure to click the link in the description box below to receive 60% off your subscription. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Lisa, and welcome to my Dallas home. Come on in. Hi, my name is Lisa Henderson and we are here in my living room in Dallas, Texas. We moved in in 2017 and it was originally a one-story red brick house and we bought it with the intent of um, remodeling it and adding square footage but we knew it was going to take a while to figure it out and what the correct floor plan should be. I was very pregnant at the time, which I don't recommend <laughs> moving seven months pregnant. And we knew it was going to take you know, probably about two years realistically before we were going to be able to move back out, which is exactly what ended up happening. I would describe my home as um, traditional but fresh. And I like to say um, that, you know, not necessarily your grandmother's traditional, but is full of color and comfortable. I want our clients to feel when they enter their home that it is a real place of respite and somewhere that they want to be and they are so happy to walk in the door every single time they open it. I live here with my husband and our three kids. We have our oldest daughter just turned 11, our son is nine, and our youngest daughter is almost six. So here we are in the formal living room. This is the space right that you see right when you walk in the front door. And um, in the original house, this was eight foot ceilings and it was very dark. It was a really, really gloomy space. And this window actually was on this south wall over here. And when we remodeled, we were able to bring it over to get the Western light and to help fill the space more with light right when you walk in the door. So in our construction, one of the things that I really have always wanted was floor to ceiling bookshelves. And I was really hoping to make this kind of library living room feel for right when you walk in the front door. I wanted it to feel very kind of English, cozy, and with lots of layers. And something that people don't realize when they walk in is that all of the books are actually organized by category. So I know exactly where to go when I'm looking for something. This bay here is all American interior designers, and then we go into architects and gardening. Once we get over to this side here, we get more into travel. We have the Italian section and the French section and then we get into British interior designers over here and then we have filled in all amongst the books just things that I've collected from travels and going all over um, different places pieces of art one of the things I collect for my husband is um, called trench art and it is from World War One that the soldiers would make while in the trenches of war and I have found different pieces for him all around the world 
This is a really neat little mustard spoon here that was made out of a pair of um, British pennies. And then this here is actually called a Queen Mary tin. And these were given by Queen Mary to the troops one year for Christmas. And I found a couple of these, but this one is really interesting because um, it still has the original contents in it. And it's the original cigarettes that you can see from 1914 that were the gifts to the troops from Queen Mary for Christmas that year, which is really, really special. There's also a letter. I didn't say the letter. With best wishes for a happy Christmas and a victorious new year from the Princess Mary and friends at home. So the original mantelpiece that was on the, in the house was much taller and not pretty or of anything of interest. It was very out of scale for the room. And so by using a plaster mantle, we were able to hug the firebox as close as possible without having to have a secondary material around the fire. There's a wonderful plaster company here that we came up with this design together that we did the fluted, uh, reeded looking on top and the dots around the sides, kind of art deco looking, but we were able to make the overall presence smaller in the room because it's not a very large scale space. And then these sconces I actually purchased for our old house and brought them over and they originally would have been from a ship and you can see they swing to and fro and they would have been to show if the ship was level or not. And so you can see, uh, you could see if they were on calm or uh, busy waters. And then the um, lampshades are actually from fabric that I bought in Paris and brought them back and turned them into shades. This is an artist from France that I have found that these are actually a pair of terracotta candlesticks that you um, is made into figurines and all of her pieces are one of a kind. And I thought this little pair was really cute that she's got a little basket on her head carrying you know, her market bundle. And then he's got his hands in his pockets over here with the uh, pipe smoking and he looks kind of grouchy. I thought he was really cute. Uh, this is a local Dallas artist named Sally Taylor. This is a, an abstract ink drawing of hers that is supposed to look like the sand dunes in Carmel, which is a place that we love to go. And I thought that it was really unique that you kind of can't tell what it is. And then once you know the origin of it, you see, uh, you kind of start to see the dunes. And then I paired it next to this little painting of a horse that I found on the side of a flea market in Paris for $5 in an envelope and brought it back and framed it. So it's fun, kind of the mix of all of it together. I wanted this room to be a really cozy by the fireplace kind of spot. I, like I said, it's the first thing that you see right when you walk in the door. And so I wanted it to feel very inviting, but also a great conversation spot for two people or six. It's really our kind of winter spot to come sit by the fire here and we'll have a picnic on the floor on a particularly cold day and make soup for the kids. They think that's so much fun to sit by the fire and have a picnic and or we can play a game and you know I might move the coffee table out and put a card table in front and pull up four chairs. So kind of just whatever the need is for the, the time we can move things around accordingly. I have loved interior design probably since high school. I had a mentor growing up in Houston who she lived in a tiny house with her and her two little, her young family. And it was so small and immaculate. It was so cozy and very inviting. And we spent a lot of time there. And she was a really, really great inspiration to me. She worked with her mom and the two of them uh, were interior designers together. And it was then that I said, this is what I wanted to do. Now we're in the dining room. Um, we, in the construction, we wanted to lift the spaces up as much as possible, but we were restrained by the existing window heights. And so one of the things that we did, we were able to gain a foot downstairs, but we added these transoms to add more light into each space and to give some architectural interest. One of the things that I really didn't care for in the original house was it really lacked any architectural design. And so one of the things that we did 
was, like I said, adding the transoms. And then another thing that we did both in here and in the formal living room was we did a high gloss ceiling. And so it really is reflective and adds to the space. And again, kind of trying to lift the light up and try to create a larger space than maybe what is here. Um, we added this really, really narrow console table because this is kind of a, oh, this is the thoroughfare from the front space to the dining room into the back, but it just felt a little void having nothing here. And this was the perfect speed piece that only took up 12 inches and we can serve off of it as well. And then we, um, you know, added some lamp, which provides some really great evening light and then, uh, hung the additional art and mirror overhead. Um, the wallpaper in this room is by Caitlin McGlawley, who I love all of her work and we use her papers and textiles often. I really wanted something colorful and fresh in here and it took me a really long time to figure out what the right thing was and she came out with this kind of tree of life paper and I thought this was just perfect for the space. I love all the different colors that it has and all the different colors that you can bring out of it. This photograph here is by Anouk Krantz, who I love her work and I love the juxtaposition of bringing the black and white photography into this really colorful space. And um, this was one that uh, we thought this piece was a really neat one that has the dogs trailing behind the cowboy going into the brush. And then over into here, we added this bay window in the construction just to give a little bit more square footage into the space and to be able to kind of shift the room over. And that really helped to be able to move the dining table over. What you don't realize walking in here is that the light fixture is actually off-centered in the room. We've kind of created this optical illusion so that you can shift over into the bay and have the walkway. Our table has two additional leaves, so it can get much larger and we can really easily seat 12 people in this space that's otherwise really not that big. It's uh, an antique Indian bone mirror that I found um, at an antique shop here and I love the colors. And I remember a sweet lady when I first started working um, we were talking about antique mirror and how you really can't see in them and they're really not necessarily as useful as a mirror made today, but that they're really just more for, for looks. It's aesthetically pleasing. And I told her I was 22 and, you know, didn't know anything. And I told her that I really did not care for antique mirror and I really was not very interested in it. And she just very politely paused and said, you will. And I was like, oh, I'm sure she's right. And then here we are. You know, this is one of my very favorite pieces, uh, my very favorite mirrors. And you can't even hardly see your face to put your lipstick on in it. And, it, and you know, I love it anyway. Here we are in the um, bar and china cabinet space. This is one of my favorite spaces in the house. This originally was the washer and dryer to the left and the breakfast table to the right. And it is only 48 inches long and is so efficient. It stores so much. We have an under counter wine fridge here and sink. And I, I love to do a sink in a bar area that you can then use the sink as your wine chiller at a party. And so we'll fill this with ice and put wine bottles or waters in here. And then you don't have an additional wine bucket sitting on your counter, sweating, making a mess and taking up valuable square footage. And then here we have all of our glasses, which I love to collect. Um, and I'm always adding to different things. I got these last summer um, with my daughter in Paris. So that was like a fun little thing for us to find together. And these are my grandmother's coupe glasses. That was really fun to get from her. And I'm always adding and collecting. These are a fun little sunflower collection that make for a great, you know, lemonade or cocktail or an iced tea. You can kind of go lots of different ways with these. I have a set of 15 of these very simple CB2 pink glasses that you wouldn't believe tend to go with so many things. And then going up here, we have some Murano glasses. That is a really 
fun set of six that you can pull out lots of different colors to go with. These actually are some of my very favorites and I only have three of them, but I love all of the colors and the way that they move with the light and all the different things, you know, linens you could pair with those. If anybody has any more, I would love more of those. So being here in Texas, we, you know, everybody always has Topo Chico on hand and you, you know, I like having it set out in a bar and we often put it in our clients' houses in bars and it's just carbonated water from Mexico and you can drink it by itself over ice, put lime with it, mix it with grapefruit juice, make a cocktail, you know, the options are endless, but I just think that it looks nice sitting out and looks like you're ready to go to offer someone something any time of day. So coming in here, we have um, some dishes that I have collected over the years from Italy that is really fun because it's all different animals. And every time we go, we add a little bit to the collection and then we kind of can mix, mix and match it with other pieces. I've got these fun um, fish shaped dishes that look really cute paired with the animals. And then um, we've got, you know, chips and dip bowls here and salad bowls. This is actually part of their new collection that someone brought back for me this year. And I'm hoping to go find some more of it on our trip. And it's, my kids think it's all really fun. You know, what animal is in your pasta? Did you get the frog or the donkey or the horse? You know, they think it's all good times. And then we have more formal china. We have our um, tobacco leaf by Matajeta and then um, different Janori pieces that I like to mix all of the different colors here and I'm always adding to the tablescape and kind of the different ideas of what all you can pair together. And then up above I have just a set of plain dishes that are always good to have on hand at any given moment if you have more people over or just need a slice cake for 20 or something simple like that, wine bucket, and then up higher where you can't see every day, I have Christmas. And so then at Christmas time, I'll pull that down and move other things up so you can see it all different times of year. So here we have the kitchen, which is um, kind of a galley style pass through. And uh, we needed to make this as efficient as possible and really kind of create a kitchen family room experience that they talk to and look at each other. And this is obviously, you know, like any other house where we are all the time, where we stand and do everything. Um, this is my very favorite oven from La Conch that I refer to as my fourth child. And we actually had bought the oven and had it here before we even drew plans to remodel the house. And so the, you know, where it was gonna go and the size of it and everything was integral in um, figuring out the kitchen layout. It started, started here. And then we um, filled the walls with white subway tile all the way to the ceiling again to kind of try to move the eye up. And we kept this door, this was the one cute architectural element of the original house that we kept and it was the back door and we cut it and made it into a Dutch door, which is so much fun for my kids. And we, this is where we like to serve to them when they're sitting outside and they like us to call their number up and we tell them their plate is ready. <laughs> we wanted to be able to have some kind of a small table in here, even though eating outside in the dining room is really primarily where we eat, but we were able to add this little nook here of a table, which is great for a bowl of cereal in the morning. And I really wanted to be able to have proper cookbook storage. And so we added these shelves here. I uh, love to cook. My husband and I love to cook together. We love to collect cookbooks, you know, around the world. I'm actually in a French cookbook club here in Dallas, which is so much fun and has been a really great source of knowledge over the years. And so I have my French cookbooks here in the center. And then my kids have kind of added in all their fun little Lego creations and things that they don't want destroyed. My daughter made this cute little paper mache box of chocolates, which is really fun, kind of displayed in the kitchen bookshelf. I thought that was really cute, a proper uh, kind of spot for it. 
And so this is, you know, where we hang out. Walking over to the family room side, which obviously this is all one room that you know, speaks to each other. And I really wanted it to feel inviting and warm, but still full of color and not too precious that children couldn't be here because this is where we are all day, every day, kind of in these spaces. And uh, we even, we have a, our collection of photos and little trinkets that they're always adding to and rearranging over here from this uh, antique Welsh dresser. And I'm always kind of you know, playing with these shelves are actually very short and they don't hold very much. And I am always, you know, hesitant of you know, worrying about what can we fill in those spaces? And then my kids have just kind of done it for me and they've added all of their things. And this is kind of always an evolving spot here. One thing that I really wanted to achieve in our construction was getting a lot of light in this space and really making the outdoor speak to the inside. We will, in any given evening, you know, have these doors wide open and everybody's running in and out. And then, you know, we've got music playing and TV going and dinner being made. And this is kind of the main hub of the house. Um, and another thing with that is I really wanted the playroom to be off of the kitchen. This is really kind of where my kids are all afternoon and evening. And, you know, we're making dinner or we're outside and they're playing here or running outside. It kind of gives all of their spaces open to them at all times of the day. And I've got their artwork hung all over the walls and um, we've got our little Harry Potter closet under here which goes to underneath the stairs. They think that's really fun to go under here and go underneath the stairs. Here we are in the powder bath and this was something that we did not have in the first model of the house or even in our previous house a true dedicated powder bath so this was very exciting to get here and we um, I worked with Adelphi wallpapers on this paper and gave them Farron Ball paint colors that they created this colorway which was really really fun for this space I've always loved this pattern and really love how the colors came out and then we did this really fun plaster molding around the ceiling um, with the same um, company who did the fireplace in the front room. And then hung this really pretty pale pink uh, mirror by Fleur Home, my friend Natalie in New Orleans. And um, this is just kind of came out exactly how I hoped it would. And we really love to use the space. Now we're upstairs on the second floor and this is our bedroom. And this was obviously part of the addition. The whole upstairs was new construction. And in our previous house, we had a vaulted ceiling. And so I really had loved that and wanted to recreate it again in this space. Um, something that we like to do, I don't do it in every room, but I kind of like the idea of one room of the house being all one pattern. And so in this room, we've used a single pattern on the wallpaper, the draperies, the headboard, and the dust skirt all and kind of give you that envelope feel that you're wrapped in one single pattern. The bedding is from Leontine Linens in New Orleans and was actually part of my previous bedroom and pattern and it worked perfectly with our new room and so it was a great way to use something that we already had. I found these lampshades in London from Penny Morrison and I love kind of the juxtaposition of the mashup of throwing in the hot pink with the blue that we already have and not making it all so one, one note, kind of mixing it up a little. And then over here we have, um, this is a Texas artist named Victoria Hagen who's done these pretty little oil paintings. And then we've paired it with our, uh, up here I keep our magazines that we like to keep. We are big fans of the YOLO Journal and W. Brown. And so this is kind of my Saturday morning reading that I like to pick one up and go through it and sit in bed. And then over here we have another a little chair in the corner mixed with a oil painting that I found in Paris at an antique show. Continuing upstairs, we have my kids' rooms. This is my son's room that this um, wallpaper and drapery fabric is actually the latest additions to my textile company. We named this wallpaper pattern Echo and Tejas and you can see all of the different um, little animal creatures in it. We have 
a horse and a armadillo, a javelina family and some armadillos and a windmill and blue bonnets and turkeys and Indian paintbrushes and big oak trees. And so this is kind of our nod to Texas. And then his drapery fabric is also part of our textile collection that's called Fonte Italiano. And it's kind of an abstract camouflage in um, all different shades of blues. And we thought the two paired really well together. His room, actually, we had all of the artwork pieces before we had the wallpaper and fabrics figured out. This is an old uh, school map that was originally on the roll that you think of, like pulling down a map from an old classroom. And we took it off the roll and framed it. This was a uh, map of Texas here and then a little Willie Nelson poster that my husband had when we were dating and I thought that it would be uh, cute to add to a boys room and so we actually had all of this all together before we ever did anything else in the room so it's kind of a work backwards scenario and then the rest just came to be. Now we're headed to my daughter's room but we'll stop at their bathroom on the way. Um, I It was really tricky to create a Jack and Jill space that was not too boy or too girl and I still wanted it to be really fun. So what we did was we have totally neutral tiles. It's really just a white palette and a very little amount of kind of crazy animal portrait wallpaper. And it's really fun. They, you know, there's all kinds of little quirks in the paper. Like she's got, her, this cat has her little jar of, that says cookie safe. And uh, we've got the dogs on the horses over here. And there's another one that's going to jail. And uh, so it's just kind of a fun, really whimsical. This is a New York artist named Carly Beck. And it was just kind of a really fun way to make a boy and girl bathroom and still be youthful and kind of not take it too seriously. And if they ever want to change it, you know, it's just a couple of rolls of wallpaper and the tile is already there, ready to go in a very neutral way. This is my girl's room here. And um, we have a pair of twin beds that I originally had in our old house, these headboards that were made into a day bed. And we split them apart and made them into a pair of twin beds. And then they have a little staircase over here going upstairs to a little loft that has another queen size bed up there. So we can really seat, sleep a lot of people here. And there's a lot of space. And then we have a little reading nook under the stairs here. And it's just a really fun, really fun room. This is a Danish artist named Git Brandt. And she does all of these animals and on all this really kind of whimsical, fun way. And we had selected the elephant with the Indian parasol. And then she writes a saying in French on the bottom. And so in French, this reads Lottie, dance with me, which is really fun with the elephant and uh, just kind of a really cute, playful thing for a room. In this space, a lot of times people will ask, why do you, you know, do you really want to kind of take it this far in a children's space? Or what if they mess it up? Or what if they outgrow it? And I really kind of believe that if you give your kids beautiful rooms, that they will hopefully maybe love beautiful things and will take good care of it. Um, my girls are harder on their friends taking care of their spaces than they are on each other because they really like their room and they really want it to, you know, kind of stay this way. But I also think that you have to not take yourself too seriously. And I, we have the conversation a lot of times with clients of, you know, this is not going to be the last decision you're ever going to make. And I think that people think wallpaper is so committal and is so forever feeling and it's not, you know, and it's okay if you change it in 10 years or, you know, 20 years, you had a really great time enjoying it for those years. And so I just kind of say, you know, don't take yourself too seriously and to pick the things that you want to enjoy and that you want to live with and that bring you happiness. I would say that home is where you feel the most comfortable. It's where you feel the safest. It's where you feel warmth. It's where you want to return to, whether it's at the end of a work day or at the end of a trip or just a couple or a lunch. And um, it's where you feel most welcome. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.